Roswell Flight Test Crew here at AUVSI Exponential 2016. Click subscribe to keep up with our coverage from the show. And I'm here speaking with Zenon Dragon of Dragonfly. How are you doing, Zenon? Great. How are you doing, Patrick? I'm good. And Zenon here is a, a real legend in the multi-rotor community. Dragonfly was probably the first commercial multi-rotor company ever. And there's some deep history with you, including some sitting right here on the table in front of us. Yeah, this is one of our first models called the uh, Dragonfly R2. Back in the day, it, it only had gyro no accelerometers. It had thermal sensors to actually measure the difference between the atmosphere and the ground to keep it level. About 2001, we started putting cameras on these multi-rotor helicopters. People started buying them for rock videos back in the day. And that sort of opened up the way of the future development of Dragonfly. So at a fairly early stage, it was a novelty. And then we realized that people really wanted to do video in small quarters. So that's how the Dragonflyer system got developed. It's been a fun ride. Speaking of history, there is just so much that your guys' platforms have done over the years. Yeah, we're in about seven different museums around the world, uh, most notably the Smithsonian, which is, we have an aircraft there called the Dragonflyer X4ES that was piloted by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and it was accredited as the first drone to save a person's life. How that happened, it was a single car rollover. The person got disorientated. It was sort of a very cold day, and he was already beyond the stages of hypothermia, and they found him about four o'clock in the morning using a thermal camera on our system. Yeah, I, I remember reading about that story at the time. Truly remarkable. In addition to all the history, you've got some really neat looking platforms over here. Why don't you tell us about them? Sure, yeah, we have our newest model that we sell right now is called the Dragonflyer Commander. That comes with a specialized GCS that has a Panasonic tough pad in the middle of it. We design our own autopilot technology, flight control software, ground station motors, speed controllers, and airframes. So we do everything in-house in Canada. I guess some of the notable things about this new aircraft is it's very compact, flies for a long time, up to 45 minutes, which is hard to do. We also do our own battery technology. So if one battery fails or becomes disconnected, it'll actually quickly switch over to the other battery. So there's a little bit of redundancy there. There is human counting that we do for the battery technology, auto storage mode. So a lot of people don't realize this, but if your battery is stored at a higher voltage, then it actually degrades the battery. You just press the battery to a NFC device and it gives you your complete history. The battery of the temperature that it got, how many hours are on the battery, voltages, peak curve, and everything like that. And what kind of payloads are you flying with these systems? We're flying mostly different variations of Sony cameras, thermal cameras, multi-spectral cameras. Generally the Sony sensors is what we use. All right, outstanding. Well, Zen, such a pleasure to have met you in person. I mean, a real legend in the field. So thank you for taking the time Great. to speak with us. Thanks a lot. Take care. All right. And from AUVSI 2016, this is the Roswell Flight Test Crew signing off.